Now here's an example of a notification that showed up as an email. And take a look at the format of the notification. It, it's really quite nice. It, it says, you know, check this, uh, this particular value. It tells us what the value took and when it took it th at that value. And all of this is custom content. It's a custom message. Uh, and it also includes an option here to go ahead and acknowledge this. So what we're going to study now is how do you actually configure that? How do you configure a notification so that the content includes all that? And as we go through this, you'll notice that there is a content tab if you are using an older version of notifications only. That's the 1.1 version or earlier. Uh, with the 1.2 version, which is what this video is about, you have a brand new option. Instead of content, it says message. I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new notification. So in this notification, you'll notice that the, there is a message option instead of a content option. Now this new message tab goes way beyond the functionality of the previous content tab. This content tab gave you the option to choose some standard content plus add or subtract a couple of extra options. And those options are still available in the message tab. But the message tab gives you so much more flexibility and it also offers you the ability to create uh, what we're calling uh, delivery formats. So you can create a variety of delivery formats. Now this one right here is the default. It's just called global default for this email delivery channel. And you can't edit that from here. You actually have to edit that from the notification settings, which we'll look at later. But I can create new delivery formats from here and then have those as choices for my subscribers. So I'll go ahead and create a new delivery format right now. Uh, just choose a brand new one. And I will call this delivery format. Let's just call this something like delivery format A. Now, by choosing brand new for a delivery format, what we end up with is a, a format that's completely empty. This is where you can put anything you want. So, for example, uh, this is where in the body of the message I can say, you know, take note uh, because the, uh, the notification called and then put in the notification name. I'll just double click that right there. Has just triggered. And then I can start supplying all kinds of other information about it. You know, the current value is, and actually until, until I configure the trigger tag, I can't really specify that, but you know, things like the, uh, the triggering conditions, the uh, value of the trigger tag, etc., that all can be added. So, and, and then if we take a look at how uh, this this actually is going to look in the message. All we need to do is choose HTML preview and it gives me a preview of what this looks like. So see, it substituted the name of the notification for the name uh, or that, that keyword that we put in there, the notification dot, uh, colon name. And this is where I can go ahead and drag information from over here, these different uh, fields here, into the subject line. So I can, you know, this is where I'd say uh, uh, notification has fired and then put the name of the notification again has fired something like that something in the subject line and that will show up as you can see in the preview now that's a lot of work to go ahead and put all those things together but it's completely flexible and if you want a head start on on doing this uh, what you can do is just copy the an existing one so for example I think I'll start by copying this existing uh, instead of building this one completely from scratch, I'll go to my global default here. I'm going to choose the duplicate option. That's going to be delivery format B. So I can create as many of these delivery formats as I need to. And of course, I don't need to name them delivery format. I just wanted to make it obvious that what we're doing is we're just giving an arbitrary name. And that goes, in this case, with this delivery channel. And I can choose different delivery channels if I want. So now that I've copied this, as you can see, this, this has preserved all the, uh, from the default. So a lot of the stuff that I may want just by default has now appeared in there. And when I look at the preview, you can see this is going to be a much you know, richer looking notification because it's already got a lot of information in it. But you know, if at any point I can go ahead and add new things. Uh, if I want to add something that's not in here, you know, I'll just go down here wherever I need to put it. Yeah, let's just put it in here. You know, hi folks, you know, the notification 
named, and then put in my notification name. You know, has just fired. You can make it more a little more English language if you wanted. And all the all the nice formatting you would expect is available. So I can go ahead and make this font bigger or smaller. Nope. Let me go ahead and change that. Yeah, there we go. Uh, as as I require, and I can go ahead and look at the preview here, and see how that looks. You can find uh, the definitive word on what each of these different fields represents. You know, the the Pi server name can be uh, can be used here, etc. You can find all that in the Pi Notifications User Guide. What I'd like to do is just point out some of the things that are that are a little bit different, a little unique, uh, that really do require some better explanation. So let's start with the simple things. If you recall, when we looked at this notification, we saw there was a little acknowledgement. This is in my example. How do you add that acknowledgement? Well, as you can see, there's an option right here. It's part of the standard content. You can just go ahead and, and specify that you want to add that acknowledgement. And typically, we add it as the uh, hyperlink. So as you can see, this, this right here uh, includes that acknowledgement in the message that we send out to the uh, email. Now this uh, this has either with or without comments, so the choice is up to you. Now a second option is something that you won't find in the um, in this list here in the content pane. Uh, see, not everything that you can add is in that, that pane already. You can choose Add from here and find other things that aren't there. For example, File. Uh, we didn't even look at this, but a, a file attachment would go with that email notification such that anybody who receives it can just open up that file. This opens up a whole world of possibilities. I can attach operating instructions, or in the case of what I'm doing right now, I can add a link to a process book display. So for example, here's a display. I'd like that to be included as a file attachment. Now, I have to first add it to this pane. Once I add the, that, I then make use of it over here in the body. So I'll go into my delivery format B here. So I can say C, you know, file attached and then go ahead and make that attachment. I'll go ahead and double click here. That just simply shows up here as a file attachment that I can remove if I need to. But that's my, that now becomes part of this message. Now, in addition, there's an option here to do web links uh, to some of our ap applications like RT Reports and Web Parts, as well as to other uh, web pages, if you like. Uh, so for example, with, uh, with Web Parts, what I can do is make reference to some web part page and then optionally pass arguments to that. So for example, uh, I have a web part page right here. Uh, this is a Pi Web Parts running. And within this lab site, I think I have an exercise one. And let me just go ahead and see if I can find it. There it is. This exercise one. I'm going to go ahead and copy that and paste that in here as my link address. And I'll just say this uh, as go to exercise one in web parts, something like that. Now I have the option to pass arguments, uh, start time, end time, and that's really beyond the scope of this particular class. We're, we're not going to get into how web parts can be configured such that they receive arguments. For example, you can create new parameters in which, uh, for example, you could specify new tag names to be trended. You know, if, you, if you're interested in doing that, um, there is more information about uh, arguments and parameters you can pass uh, in web parts. But without passing anything in this case, uh, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and configure that. And as you can see here, it shows up. If I make use of this, let me go ahead and put this down here. And now watch what happens when I take a look at the preview. Now here's my hyperlink. Uh, right now I'm on this web page, but when I click on that preview, it should take me out to that page that I've designated. There we go. Now, if you had, during installation of notification, specified that there's a web parts server uh, available to you, then you would see this option here to add an, a web parts trend, this instant trend. Uh, you simply add that hyperlink to your message, and then when somebody clicks on that instant trend, it's going to show the important things in that notification, the trigger tag. You can check on that by going into Tools, Notification Settings, and going to Global Configuration. If you have configured a Pi Web Parts server, that will be an option that's available for you. I showed you that you could do a file. You can also do a file link. There we go. So this is going to the right share in the right place. I'll go ahead and make reference to that. 
And if we take a look at this, yeah, this is now making reference to that using a UNC reference, which is you know what we're going after here. We're not looking for hard-coded references. So I'll go ahead and dump that hyperlink in there. And similar to the content attachment, the results are going to be similar. But as you can see, it's not really attaching the file. So let's call this to linked display. And now I'll just drop this hyperlink over here. And when we preview this, it should have the same result uh, as this launching this file attachment. This would launch a PDI file. This is going to go out and launch that PDI file. In this case, it'll go ahead and launch a copy of Pi Process Book. What you put there is up to you. If you want to put a doc file or a PDF file with some operating instructions, that's a perfectly fine way to go ahead, go ahead and do that. And there we go. As you can see, there's that file that was uh, that we've linked there. Now, in this uh, standard pane, we've seen that uh, there are certain things about the notification that you can insert, but there's also things about any other of the things in AF that you would like to add, any of the other other attributes. So, if I go into Add and choose Attribute Value, as you can see, I can I can kind of traverse through the database that I'm currently working with and find things that need to be added. So these are typically things that are not going to be part of the triggering mechanism. They may be other attributes like maybe a part number or you know a, a maintenance history. So you know, th those are examples of things in addition to those standard things that you can add from here. That's, uh, that's the ultimate flexibility now because you can just go out and put any attribute you want. I had mentioned earlier that you can't really change this uh, global default email. You can't do it from here anyway. This is the default uh, delivery format. Well, you actually can change that from within Tools and then Notification Settings. You would go in and make your changes there. Right here under Delivery Formats, it's, as you can see, almost an identical user interface. Uh, just about all the things that you would normally want to you know, be able to make use of, you can make use of here as well.